Hey guys, AJ here, back with another one for you. So we got another episode of Who Is This For? Okay? And this is a series where, guys, we go over pop culture stuff. And I honestly ask, yes, like... Guys, when it comes to a lot of this woke stuff, you know, like Amazon's Rings of Power and, and the new Little Mermaid and all this woke stuff, who is this for? Right? That's the question. Who is this for? Because it's not for us. It's not for mainstream audiences and mainstream consumers so who is this for the plus size april o'neill and ninja Tur turtles guys who is this for right and guys bud light really 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 stepped in it this time okay and so we're gonna jump into this guys before we do please remember to like subscribe drop a comment because it really helps to keep this channel going and hit the notification bell guys bud light Bud Light has been really, really popular in the last 10 years. And this is because they've really done some really, really smart marketing, right? Bud Light's still drank by a lot of older people, people but they've been really, really kind of like pushing the brand for like, you know, Gen Z and younger millennials. They had Post Malone in a lot of the commercials and Post Malone was... Uh, advertising the seltzer and all this stuff so they were doing it was pretty smart right they were pop popular in the on the coasts where all the blue people live and in the heartland where all the red states are right smart marketing young old black white right if you wanted to have a good time the super bowl crack open the bud light right genius marketing but now guys they have uh put this uh, Transformer influencer in charge, I mean, uh, at the forefront of the brand. <laughs> and uh, things aren't going too well. So let's just jump into this. I have a news clip here. This is from Sky News Australia. This is how big this is. It's They're talking about this in Australia, the UK, uh, Brazil. It's everywhere. But this is a take from Australia that that I thought was actually pretty funny. So let's just jump into this here, guys. No doubt you would have seen in the last few days, transgender it girl Dylan Mulvaney, amongst a long list of endorsements, has added Bud Light, which is a terrible beer that comes out of the US. I wouldn't recommend you drink it, and I tell you what, if Dylan Mulvaney endorsing it encouraged anyone to drink it, then they need their head Red, but it just sort of adds to the list of these woke causes that. So that's this person right here. This is a transformer, right? Um, who's has like hundreds of millions of people following them on the, uh, you know, TikTok and all this other stuff, right? <laughs> so this is the person that they've made like the face. So they went from Post Malone to this. A lot of uh, obviously corporate organisations have been getting behind. Kid Rock, who's a singer, former husband of Pamela Anderson, responded to it this week in the manner you can see there, shooting out the cans of Bud Light, which is about all they're good for. But it's very clear what is going on here. Listen to the vice president of Bud Light talking about why they did this. Now, this is the, the new vice president of marketing, okay? Not the vice president of the company. So that's... So where he misspoke. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like we mm -hmm. need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. You've got to see people who reflect you in the work. And we had this hangover. I mean, Bud Light had been kind of a brand of fratty, kind of out of touch humor. And there you go, guys, right there. I'm going to stop this right here. This sounds like Kathleen Kennedy when she came into Star Wars, right? This sounds like those morons at Amazon when they came into Rings of Power, right? Oh, this is an outdated, you know, all male, blah, blah, blah. So we need to elevate and evolve, okay? That reasoning right there that that woman said is why all of your favorite franchises are in the trash. Star Wars. Star Trek, Lord of the Rings. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's this m type of mindset where these people can just think that they can come in and think what I think is good is good for everyone. And it's just not the case. And the craziest part, guys, is with Bud Light, 
So many people drink Bud Light. Their marketing was basically like, it was one of the only like major brands where if you go out, you see a, a, a country bar, a ghetto club, all types of establishments and people drinking Bud Light. So I don't know what this foolishness is that this woman's talking about. Let's get back into it. Marketing beer to beer drinkers, i.e. men, it's a strange <laughs> proposition, it isn't it? But it raises the question, if this is happening so often as it is now, will boycotts work? Is it time for people to stand up and say, I'm not going to buy these products anymore if corporates continue to go down this woke road? Look, I, I think that it can work for a short time, but ultimately people fall back into their old habits. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. But if you don't have some sort of fight, you've kind of already rolled over and let it happen, haven't you? So what, so what he's saying is not correct. Because who remembers, guys, that Gillette commercial? That toxic masculinity commercial from Gillette during the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Gillette lost like $6 billion and they haven't come back. They haven't recovered since. And have you guys noticed that in the last four or five years was a Dollar Shave Club and Manscaped and all these other companies came in and they filled the void that Gillette left because men walked away from the company. Men are not buying Gillette products anymore en masse, okay? I'm sure quite a few do, but the, a large amount, enough left to where smaller companies that started out on the, on the internet, like Manscaped, are making a lot of money now, filling that void. So yes, these boycotts can work. I agree with you on, on the boycott having a small and short-term effect. But the great thing here I see, Liz, is people are mocking and ridiculing this company. And I think mockery and ridicule, that can last the distance and cause big change. Well, it's, no one wants it's to be the laughed same at. Thing. And the mockery and ridicule really helps spread the word. That's why people are making these videos. Yeah. There's the mockery and ridicule. People see it and then they know what's going on and can boycott it. I think it's very effective. We saw this with Disney. We saw this with Netflix. And it's the only retaliation that the everyday individual has against these companies who are pushing agendas we are not on board with. I think it's incredibly powerful because at the end of the day, every corporate just wants one thing and that is your dollar. So if enough of you band together and deprive them of that, you're as good as done. Absolute facts. And Disney's learning that now with Star Wars. And Marvel. Guys, Marvel Phase 4 was trash. And now the first film of Phase 5, that's Ant-Man, Ant flopped. People are done with this. Men, we vote with our wallets and our feet. We don't start movements. We don't make weird hats of any kind and run, run around. We just don't buy it. So I, I'll be interested to actually see where this goes. But here we have our article, guys, and it's called Bud Light Sales a bloodbath after Dylan, whoever's promotion ignites culture war. And guys, here's another thing too. They're just supposed to be selling beer. Why did you bring this in into your whole advertising and your company's image and stuff? This is so dumb. This is so dumb. All people want to do is drink beer and have a good time. And, and whoever's decision that it was to bring this you know, gender transformer stuff in is probably kicking themselves right now. Because this is just not a smart move. So here we go. So this person uh, who is LGBTQ+, plus promotes Bud Light in an Instagram video for a college basketball tour tournament. Sales of the beer have since fallen around the country. According to reports, bottle sales are down 30% and tap sales are down as much as 50%. Braintree Brewhouse, a sports bar in Boston, reports that 80% of Bud Light drinkers ordered something else this week. A bar uh, in New York City's Hell's Kitchen, known for its largely gay community, reported Bud Light drafts down 58% and bottle sales down 70%. A Texas bar... With a Bud Light-sponsored dart league, 
which normally, normally sells three kegs of beer during the weekly event, claims to have sold just four bottles this week, a drop of 99%. So, guys, this is a stupid idea. And what these people, especially this knucklehead right here, that's the vice president of marketing, needs to ask what we ask all the time on this channel when it comes to pop culture or any type of marketing or anything. Who is this for? Who is this for? Who? <laughs> All right, you guys. I'll keep you guys updated. Let let me know if you've seen any of this new mar marketing campaign. Let me know if you even drink Bud Light. Because <laughs> a lot of people, people, people hate it. And let me know what you think that they were thinking when they did this. All right, you guys, this is AJ. I appreciate you guys. Like, subscribe, and I am out of here.